Good afternoon. I had a question today from one of my followers about the gutta percha extrusion and they wanted to share with you the answer uh, so it's beneficial to everyone. And by the way, I'm recording this through Snapchat. So if you haven't added me yet, please do so using this username. Now, before I get into this topic, I wanted to mention uh, one paper. The um, title is Factors Affecting the Long-Term Results of Endodontic Treatment by Shogren. And it was published in 1990 in the Journal of Endodontics. So, what I wanted to mention in this uh, paper in per particular is that, let's um, uh, zoom in a little bit. Now, the root filling is supposed to be within the last 0 to 2 millimeter from the apex. And if you get into that length, the probability of success is 94%. Now, if you're shorter than 2 millimeter from the apex, the success or the probability of success is going to be around 68%. And if you are beyond the apex, the probability of success is around is around 76 percent so what that means is that not every extrusion is going to be a problem but the probability of success will drop about 20 percent so how can a gutta percha beyond the apex heal after extrusion now it's uh, extremely important to understand and appreciate that the majority of um, periapical lesion is caused by uh, bacteria so it's uh, microbial but in rare cases it can actually be caused by other things such as foreign body reaction uh, or it can be caused by cholesterol crystals which is something is um, endogenous uh, this is something that we don't think about most of the time unless we take a biopsy and then send it and then we find out about it because it's very rare to happen but in this video I'm going to focus on gutta percha now gutta percha is not 100% pure so it's only 20% gutta percha and from 60 to 75% uh, zinc oxide and theoretically when zinc oxide leaks or, or, or breakdown, it's going to cause some uh, sensitivity uh, and also co going to cause um, some kind of uh, body reaction to that. In this paper by Nair, the non-microbial etiology, what uh, he talked about uh, in the, and it was by the way published in Endodontic Topics, he actually compared when large pieces um, is extruded and this is a, a large piece it actually heals by fibrous tissue around it kind of encapsulation whereas when you have a small pieces of gutta percha such as uh, these small pieces you're going to have a severe inflammation around the gutta percha it's also important to um, use a biocompatible sealer most of the sealers are uh, biocompatible except AH 26, which has uh, uh, zinc oxide eugenol, which shouldn't be used clinically, although I've seen some uh, companies reps still uh, sell them, but um, I would advise you not to use it. Now, from a clinical point of view, what should you do when you, what should you, do when you, uh, when you have a gutta percha extrusion? My advice is to wait and see because um, you have a 70% uh, uh, probability of success, which is not too bad if you think about it. And if there is any more symptoms or uh, if the problem persisted, I would advise you to either refer it to an endodontist or um, perform a apicoectomy if you did the root canal uh, treatment well.